Hey, what is up guys? So today we're gonna to be talking about how to build your Yu-Gi-Oh collection from scratch. And they kind of go hand in hand with how to make money in Yu-Gi-Oh. So I'm gonna add it to that series. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump right into it because we got a lot of stuff to talk about. So uh, first off, I get asked this question all the time. How do I build my collection? I have zero Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Because you know, people see some of my older videos and they uh, know that I used to vend Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I used to buy a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. This is actually a really old video. If you wanna check it out, link down below in the description box. It's actually from like 2000. 2010, but uh, you, everyone's gonna start out somewhere. They're gonna build their collection, and I wish this video was available for myself because this would have saved me a lot of time and a lot of money. But first off, I do want to mention that, like I said, even I myself had to start out at one point with zero Yu-Gi-Oh cards. You gotta start out somewhere. So think of Doran's Blade. I'm mean, gonna use League of Legends as an example. You start out with you know things that you probably don't want uh, to end with, but you're gonna have to start with them and then work your way up. You're gonna work your way up uh, from Doran's Blade over here to the Blade of the Rune King. Now, this won't actually upgrade into this, but you know, it'll just be there at the very beginning of your Yu-Gi-Oh career. You're going to have to start out with those cards, kind of like how you play those Yu-Gi-Oh games. I mean, you start out with these weird decks that have a bunch of normal monsters, and you kind of just work your way up. Now, like I said, going back to the same point that Doran's Blade does not build into Blade of the Rune King. So sometimes you're going to have to get rid of your Doran's Blade to actually make the purchase of your Blade of the Rune King, which kind of goes hand in hand, like I said, with buying, trading, and selling Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So first off, we have to determine where do you want to uh, actually build your collection? Do you want to build a collection simply for the purpose of building a collection? Or do you want to actually be able to um build that specific deck that you want. You know you want to play dragons, you're going to build the best dragon deck, or you're going to build the best machine deck. Maybe you want to stick with an archetype, maybe you want to do a custom deck. That's totally cool too. You can decide for yourself what you want to do. So, uh, first off, I'm going to be mentioning the primary Yu-Gi-Oh! market, as well as talk about the secondary Yu-Gi-Oh! market. So, the primary Yu-Gi-Oh! market, and I'll be mentioning it several times in the video, so I'm going to give you guys the uh, rundown of what the primary Yu-Gi-Oh! market is. That consists of booster packs, the structure decks, um, even the uh, tins in Yu-Gi-Oh! This is what I would consider the primary Yu-Gi-Oh market. And there's also the secondary Yu-Gi-Oh market, which would be going online, whether it's through eBay, going on other websites, yard sales, swap meets, um, different uh, card stores. Basically, think of used Yu-Gi-Oh cards, essentially. That's what we would consider the secondary market. And you're gonna be able to make a lot more profit off of the secondary Yu-Gi-Oh market. You're gonna get more bang for your buck, is what I'm saying, if you go into the secondary market. But there is always packs in the primary market, which is something that is a complete chance. Uh, you can spend a few dollars out of a booster pack and get a card that is worth 10 to 20 times the amount of that one booster pack you bought. So this is a higher risk, higher reward. So think of this more so as gambling. Now there's also technically gambling in the secondary market of Yu-Gi-Oh! So let me go ahead and explain what the secondary uh, market in Yu-Gi-Oh! where there's that gamble aspect. So sometimes whether you're in a card store or you're online, a lot of websites do this where they say we'll give you 100 Yu-Gi-Oh! cards they're gonna give you probably like 90 commons and then they'll give you like two rares, a super rare, an ultimate rare, and like a secret rare. So they'll basically give you a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. But I highly uh, discourage this uh, purchase because the thing is, once uh, these cards are bought in bulk, these are bought in the thousands, most of these cards have already been sorted by players or by other Yu-Gi-Oh uh, card dealers that have that went through these and they pick out all the cards that are actually worth money and then they leave you with these normal monsters. I mean, I know they're showing the picture of Scythe the Sky Dragon here, but your chances of getting it are 0 to 0 because the person doing this is just showing you a picture of cards that you probably want and you're probably not going to get those cards. But you know, there is that chance, but the thing is, it's not as good of a chance as a booster pack because these are done uh, you know, completely at random. Konami's not gonna completely screw you over it and give you a box of Yu-Gi-Oh cards where you get zero holographics that are actually worth a dollar. Let's say you buy a box of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, you know, a, a full, like, you know, uh, 24 packs. Uh, through those, you're probably gonna get at least one card that's worth something, you know. Uh, whereas if you go with uh, this, and you buy multiple of these, you can get a bunch of cards that you will never use. They're just too outdated. Uh, so essentially, you're not gonna be getting bang for your buck. So. Um, going back to the primary Yu-Gi-Oh! market, so uh, booster packs are going to be the things that you want to do if you really need a secret rare or something like that and you're like, you know what, I'm never going to be able to afford that $100 card, I'm going to go ahead and push my luck with a booster pack. That is the way to go because no one is going to sell you a $100 card for, you know, two to three bucks. Uh, unless you're super lucky, you, you get uh, someone that just really wants a blue eyes white dragon and they're going to give you a card that's worth $100 for it, which technically you'd be ripping them off, but that's a topic for another day. But basically, uh, you're going to not be able to get that, you know, 
uh, logically, you shouldn't be able to get uh, you know a hundred dollar card for three dollars off of someone in the secondary market is really what I'm trying to say. Unless something is priced wrong, which can technically happen. Even vendors sometimes there's a mistake on there and they didn't uh, mark the secret rare one. They marked the common rare one or something like that. That happens sometimes. But if you want to uh, you know take a high risk, high reward booster pack is going to be the way to go. Now, if you want to actually make some profit as well as maybe you know you want to play light swords. The structure decks or the uh, starter decks are an excellent way to actually start building up that specific deck that you want or that archetype that you want. So the new Lightsworn structure deck is going to be coming out. And not only is it great for players that want to build a Lightsworn deck, but this uh, structure deck could actually be good because you can actually part out the cards individually and then you could be the vendor or you can be the uh, person that is going to be trading these cards to someone else to get the exact deck that you want because it's actually uh, much more efficient for you to actually get this. These retail for about 10 bucks uh, in the uh, United States on average sometimes player sometimes uh, different places sell them for like a dollar under sometimes they sell it for a little bit more but even after tax it's like 11 bucks you know uh, it's not gonna be that much and sometimes you can part out the cards individually now you can look up uh, like this is the realm of light uh, structure deck you can google it and you can type in like spoiler list or a wiki and then it'll actually tell you the entire card list and you can go over here and read what uh, you know, you're going to be getting out of this. So, for example, um, we're going to go ahead and sort them by rarity over here. Now, I know that this card over here, the Light Sworn Synchro Monster, will probably be worth at least one dollar. This card over here will probably also be worth at least a dollar. Over here, we have Honest, which is a good card. Uh, I don't think that will be worth a dollar because it's already got reprinted so many times. Raikou is a good card. It might be worth a dollar. So, at this point, we've got like one, two, we got three bucks over here. And I know Breakthrough Skill is worth a few bucks already. So, you might be able to add this up and individually, whether you sell some of these cards for a quarter or maybe Judgment Dragon's worth like a dollar or something like that you can add up everything and you can sell them individually which will take some time or you can trade them keep in mind this is a trading card game you should always try to trade your cards before you actually use your real money unless of course you're getting a good deal and there's other things that take uh factors in this consideration but basically you can add up everything and you can get more than that ten dollars that, that structure deck uh is worth maybe you can buy one of these and actually uh go to someone else that you know is playing an older deck they're trying to get rid of an older deck they're like you know what i'm tired of my ballot boxers you just spent ten bucks and you built a full balance boxer deck with the extra deck whereas this for 10 bucks you probably wouldn't be able to run this because more than likely you want to run more than one judgment dragon so that's just uh you know a quick little tip there's also these things called tins in Yu-Gi-Oh, and a lot of times they put a lot of great reprints in these so basically the hanzo tin uh as a year two a uh, few year or two ago um they released Rabbit, Torian, and Maxi. This was one of the best tins in a very long time. Uh, also, there was a tin that had Pot of Duality in, and sometimes you can sell the, uh, the cards in the tin and then you can actually make up for the price of the tin itself so tins retail for about 20 bucks maybe you sell maxi for five bucks you sell another card for three bucks another card for a few bucks and basically you get the tin for free goyo guardian was a there was a tin of goyo guardian the tin was 20 bucks you could sell the goyo guardians for anywhere from 15 to 20 bucks you could basically just keep on rebuying the tins and you get these i think it's five booster packs if i recall it's been a while since i bought a tin but i think you get like five booster packs out of a tin and then you get everything else for free so that's another great way to start out your Yu-Gi-Oh collection where you're not even using any money at all uh like i said the goyo guardian tin was a little bit more rare um so a lot of places didn't get it, and that's kind of why that that tin was more expensive. Sometimes you can find tins on sale for like five bucks. I've seen the older tins. Some sometimes these tins aren't actually worth it. Like the Crystal Beast one, uh, I don't think it comes with any. Like, I think it comes with like Sapphire Pegasus. I guess worth like a few bucks. But if, it, if it's five bucks, that's worth it. But sometimes when it gets in the ten area, some of these older sets are not actually worth investing into. But I highly recommend you guys to check out uh, Craigslist. Uh, let me go ahead and back out. Uh, so this is called Craigslist. Um, it's kind of like an online, I guess you could say, swap me. There's a lot of these other sites that basically uh, sell things, um, well they advertise online and usually you want to meet in person. Sometimes they can accept PayPal because I know some of you kids are younger, you don't have a PayPal account, you don't have a credit card, and you're like, I want to buy these cards online, but I don't have a, you know someone uh, to make the purchase. You can always ask your parents and see if it's cool with them. Uh, sometimes maybe your parent already has an eBay account, maybe your friend's parent already has an eBay account, maybe you can ask them. But I know sometimes uh, players are young, they're just too afraid, you know, I understand, don't worry about it. So what you can do, let's say that you want to uh, buy Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And let's say you live in uh, Alabama in, uh, let's, uh, dot hand. Okay, so you, what you're going to do, you're going to go ahead and go to this website. It's called Craigslist. There's a bunch of other sites, but this is just a little example. So you can type in, like, something like Yu-Gi-Oh, okay? And then you can see, oh, there's, there's 
people that are selling Yu-Gi-Oh cards. This guy's asking for $200, he's showing you a picture. Now this picture doesn't show me too much about his collection over here. He's got a bunch of normal monsters, but sometimes guys, there are hidden gems in these uh, collections that look absolutely atrocious. He's asking 200 OBO, which means our best offer. So maybe you can meet up with this guy, send him an email and say, hey, you know, I'm interested in your Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Uh, can we meet up at McDonald's or like a grocery store nearby? And uh, you know, you can take a look at his collection. Maybe you don't want to buy his entire collection. Maybe he only has a few holographic first edition MRD mirror forces that are in mint condition and he only wants a dollar for them. Hey, you can go ahead and pick up all of his good cards and then from there, you're good to go. Maybe that collection for $200 is worth it. Maybe he's got a bunch of old cards that are holographic that are still technically worth money today. Because a lot of times, some of these older cards are not worth as much as the newer cards because the newer cards are, are the newer archetype is what people want to play. So you got to take that into consideration as well. Uh, you can always go online and see what people are selling these cards for. There's so many different websites that can help you out with this. But uh, I don't really want to get into that now because that's that's kind of, that's another huge topic which we'll talk about in uh, another series for this. But there's also ways that you can go to different websites and make money off of. Uh, here's a website over here. Uh, this is an excellent example. Uh, this one is uh, Deep CD. But when zombies were really popular, when Brianak was at uh, three in the TCG, what happened was there was this call deck called Zombies, and basically it used Deep. C it was called Diva Zombies. It was a really popular deck by Adam Korn, and basically you would summon Deep Sea Diva to get out deep another Deep Sea Diva, and then from there you could go uh, burn from a different dimension, Mizuki, and you'd be able to just go off from there. Basically, you'd be able to synchro like twice, which was really big back in the day, uh, back in like Teledad and stuff like that. But uh, basically now Yu-Gi-Oh has gotten much faster, and this card is not relevant. But this card's only thirty-five cents. Now, when I made this purchase of Deep Sea Diva, sometimes websites just don't update. Sometimes there's a new YCS, there's a big tournament, or a deck gets really, really popular. Sometimes commons can actually be worth, uh, you know, investing your money into. For example, Deep Sea Diva, I believe, was only rare at the time. I, I purchased about twenty of them for twenty cents each, and they were worth three to four dollars each. So from there, you can go ahead and trade them, or you can sell them for cash, which you can actually use to build your deck or buy those singles that you want. So you can do that also um, in addition to whatever you're doing, whether it's structure deck or uh, booster packs or whatever you really want to do. Um, next up, I wanted to talk about going to card shops uh, that don't sort through Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Now, there are two uh, places or two different types, I would say, of uh, places that sell Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I know these are comic books, but this is basically what you'll see that I'm trying to talk about. And it's a, the example that I want to show you guys. So sometimes there'll be, be comic book stores or card shop stores, and they don't care about Yu-Gi-Oh, or maybe they're just a comic book store, and maybe they get these Yu-Gi-Oh cards donated, or someone trades them in for store credit, and the, the guy will send them, you know, thousands and thousands of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, unsorted foils and everything. They're just in a giant box, and maybe there'll be a sign that says Yu-Gi-Oh cards, one dollar for shinies, twenty-five cents each for the comments. These are completely unsorted. There's not a professional that went through these. Sometimes you can scope out a really good deal. I know that there's a lot of places that I I used to frequently check when I used to vend a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh stuff and I would check them out, you know, every few weeks and sometimes they would get in you know, foil, foil cards, Vandy's Emptiness for 10 cents or a quarter each and it was just so good because Vandy's Emptiness at one point was like 10 bucks and you could just, you know, go pick up all the commons. There is money in commons, which is a topic that I think I'll make a video about in the future, but like I said, this is start about starting a Yu-Gi-Oh collection from scratch. So maybe you know exactly what deck you want to build. Go into these stores or heck, go even into these stores that have them in like glass Yu-Gi-Oh cases or uh, the, the glass uh, displays and stuff like that. You can buy the commons. Buy the commons for a quarter each. Sometimes uh, players at tournaments will actually hook you up with the commons for free. Uh, I know myself when I used to go to tournaments and stuff and I used to pull things out of my pack, uh, there would be a, a pile sometimes that people would just throw their commons and people would just go through and sift through. Sometimes there would be a, a vendor that he would just grab all the commons and he would basically throw them in his piles of the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh lots over here. Basically this is what it comes down to and basically all the bulk uh, goes over there. But you can go to some of these tournaments. Sometimes people will give you uh, commons for free. I'm always a guy that will give you commons unless they're worth like two to three dollars each. I'll generally give out, you know, the commons that are worth ten cents each. If someone's trying to build their deck, I have no problem with giving out the commons. Sometimes you can trade your commons. Maybe someone does not care about Mecha Phantom Beast and maybe they want Modulce. So you can give them the common Modulce stuff for the common Mecha Phantom Beast stuff. You know, you can always trade. That is the point of a trading card game. Also, this is a really great area for a secondary market in Yu-Gi-Oh that is technically illegal or like they're not praised upon in uh, tournaments. Sometimes tournaments, they don't want you to buy, sell, and trade inside the venue. So just walk outside, give them some of the cash, get the card, and you'll be A-OK -okay and you won't get kicked out. But sometimes I understand people are lazy. You can always slip in the money into some card sleeves and they can do it, you know, under the table and all other good stuff. But for the most part, this is a great way also to actually um, buy a collection. Uh, I know sometimes... Uh, 
you know, it's very difficult to buy an entire collection of Yu-Gi-Oh because you might not have the budget for that. So like I said, you can actually go into, uh, you know, small card shops uh, that sort out the cards like this and then make up your few purchases there. And you can start just building your way up. Maybe you see a common card that a lot of people are playing like Breakthrough Skill. You get it for 10 cents a quarter and then you can go ahead and trade it up for, you know, whatever you want to build, whether it's Light Swarms, Dragons, Machines. You can start out anywhere and just kind of work your way up to building that expensive deck that you really want to play. Um, also, maybe uh, you know that, uh, for example, this is more like on a, a vendor side, but I figured this is kind of you know relevant to mention. Let's say that for whatever reason, the next uh, um, you know set is going to release a bunch of level seven monsters that you can just special summon immediately. Like the Dragon Ruler for an excellent example. Maybe you have a bunch of money that you've saved because maybe you bought a bunch of uh, cards and you've been selling them. Maybe you've you know established a decent amount of money. Go ahead and just pick up a bunch of cards that you know that are gonna be worth money. So for example, uh, if, if you have enough money, let's say that, uh, like I said, you know that there's gonna be a bunch of level sevens and you don't think Draco Sack is going to be getting reprinted for whatever reason, it gets announced that it's not getting a reprint or something like that, which you know no, no one ever announces that it's not getting a reprint, but reprints do get announced. So uh, for whatever reason, you can go ahead and sell all of your Draco Sacks or you can actually pick up a bunch depending on what you think is going to happen in the game. This is kind of, um, like a, it's kind of like stock market essentially. You're kind of just like, Sometimes you know exactly what's going to be coming out into the game. Sometimes you don't. You're taking a risk. You go, go ahead and buy like, you know, 10 to 50 copies of these. And then you can resell them or you can trade them for, you know, more stuff in Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, if you guys want to know how to find out where there are tournaments or where there are places to play Yu-Gi-Oh!, you can go ahead and just type in Yu-Gi-Oh! Tournaments as the first Google link. I'll actually just put it in the description box as well. You, it, depending on where you live, um, you can find out where these uh, stores play Yu-Gi-Oh!, they also leave their phone numbers so you can go ahead and give them a call and be like, hey, what time do you guys play Yu-Gi-Oh!, and then you can go and trade with them or you can buy the cards off them. Like I said, some places don't want you to actually buy, sell, and trade inside the store, so you're going to have to go out, deal, and then come back in. But um, if you know exactly what you want to build, uh, going back to the uh, topic of what I was talking about in the very beginning, uh, if you know exactly what you want to build, highly recommend you guys to pick up singles. Uh, that's much better, and this is also much better in the secondary. Well, there is no primary market of singles anyway, so you're going to have to do this. So you're going to have to go ahead and just Google the card. It should be usually the first link, and I'll send you over to the wiki page. And so if you're in uh, you know, TCG, which covers these areas, basically, if you're in the OCG, that covers these areas. Um, but let's say that you want uh, you want Judgment Dragon. You're like, you know what, I want to buy a single copy of Judgment Dragon. Um, you know, what set is the cheapest? What you can do is you can click on Show over here, and it'll tell you what set is the cheapest. Sometimes you can call stores, and you can say, hey, I'm looking for a Judgment Dragon from the... Um, Let's see which one's the common. The raw yellow mega pack Judgment Dragon. Do you guys have those and how much are those? You could also do this online, stuff like that. Um, usually the commons will be uh, cheaper than the higher rarity in Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, that will just make it cheaper for you. Because I assume when you're trying to build the deck, you probably want to, if you're starting out, you probably want the most inexpensive ones and then you could work your way up. So if you can start out with the common, the Doran's Blade, and work your way up to like the Blade of the Rune King, the hot, the the higher rarities, the foils, the secret rare version of the cards, you know, the non-reprinted ones, you can definitely do that. And those cards are definitely worth more. And sometimes also just as a great pointer is sometimes what you can do guys is let's say you get a ultimate rare, uh, card and it also comes in ultra rare you can go up to the person that has the ultra rare one and say hey um you know i can i trade you my ultimate rare card for your ultra rare card plus another like uh you know a few other cards because maybe the person wants to have a higher rarity uh deck but like i said everyone has to start out somewhere um and this is like one of my earlier videos if you guys want to check that out link down below in the description box like i said but you know everyone has to start out somewhere and like i said if you're looking for the higher risk high reward booster packs are going to be the way to go if you want the in the uh primary market also in the secondary market, sometimes you can uh, find people that want to get rid of their entire Yu-Gi-Oh collection. So you can always do that. And also when you're going to these tournaments, don't be afraid to ask uh, you know, other players. Just if you see a group of people standing around and be like, hey, does anyone have a uh, you know, X Saber Arabellum? I really need that card. And someone might go, yeah, I've got one. Uh, what do you have to trade? And you can show them what cards you have to trade and then you can make some trades because that is the kind of the point of a trading card game. Highly recommend you guys not to actually go into the primary market of Yu-Gi-Oh because uh, unless you're getting booster packs because booster packs are always fun. Sneak peeks are always fun too. But if you're looking to build your collection, I do not recommend you guys to actually go into the primary market of Yu-Gi-Oh because uh, generally you're not going to get the uh, most bang for your buck because 
Um, especially if you're trying to build a specific deck, highly recommend you guys to do individuals or singles is what they usually call it in most websites. Uh, but like I said, there's different ways you can actually start up your Yu Gi Oh collection. But like I said, there's a lot of different places to start out. Uh, if you want to know what I consider the best way to actually start out a collection, uh, I'm just going to tell you straight off. Yard sales, swap meets, Craigslist. Go to these places and see if people have Yu-Gi-Oh cards because a lot of times what happens is their son moves to college or, you know, they had a friend that used to play, a roommate, and they never paid their bills and then they had to get evicted. And basically what happens is whoever owned the Yu-Gi-Oh cards is not there and they're never going to come back. And the person is basically selling stuff that technically doesn't belong to them, but if they didn't pay their rent or something like that, um, and they're completely gone, then maybe they moved or something like that. Or like I said, their, their kids moved to college and the kid doesn't care about, you know, his older toys and stuff like that. Sometimes you'll see parents trying to sell, really, uh, get rid of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. They'll be like, you know what, you can have all of them for 10 bucks. And sometimes you can get really lucky and find a secret rare Christia for, you know, a quarter. And, you know, that happens. It really does. So, yeah, go to swap meets. Uh, go to yard sales. Um, I know some parents, uh, my parents used to go to yard sales all the time. It's a fun thing to do, too. You never know what you're going to get, whether it's video games, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. But highly recommend you guys, if you don't know where to start and you want to build a collection, yard sales, swap meets, and Craigslist are the way to go. But um, if you like the higher risk, high reward, booster packs are going to be the best for your primary market. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. And if there's any other tips that you guys have, I can maybe uh, make in addition to this series because I think that there is a lot to talk about, as far as starting out in Yu-Gi-Oh collection because um, it's just uh, something that everyone has to start out with and like I said you don't know what to do and I like I said I wish I had this video for myself stick to the swap me guys stick to the yard sales do not do not buy these card lots that, that is bad I'll slap you on the wrist if you do that because you're gonna pull awful and you're gonna be like why did I get this but sometimes you can technically get lucky I, I will I will say that it's possible although the chances of it are very very slim but anyways thanks for watching guys have a great day Asian Eyes signing out